everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, we already have uh, two minutes past four, and already the 100 keen learners have joined this program along with our all uh, experts and the speakers. So, uh, I am Dr. Jaisal Shed from Fortis uh, Mumbai. I'm welcoming all of you on the behalf of uh, uh, Maharashtra NNA to have this second uh, uh, webinar for nurses. Uh, the whole goal of the program is to actually empower the nurses, improve the knowledge gap. Every day we do everything, but you know, if we know why we are doing what we are doing, then our understanding is better. So, this uh, program is not in English. And all of you, whatever you have questions, which may push the jaye chart books map of the questions type karte jaye. With that, uh, you know, I will like to give a little intro of, of our expert today. Ajamare expert, Dr. Akash Bang. Dr. Akash Bang, he is a additional professor at uh, the Ames Hospital, Nagpur. He is a practicing neonatologist. Or unke bohosare awards say, bohosare unke expertise. वो बहुत अच्छे एकेडमिशन से सो जो भी आपकी क्वेरीज रहेंगे वो एंड में आंसर करेंगे आ, हमारे साथ है डॉक्टर प्रफुल डॉक्टर प्रफुल इज अ प्रैक्टिसिंग न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट एंड द सीनियर पीडियाट्रिशियन इन औरंगाबाद जो आज अपना पहला टॉक देने वाले हैं और उसके बाद में नेक्स्ट जो स्पीकर है वो है डॉक्टर अभय जैन अभय जैन इज आल्सो a very senior neurologist and practicing pediatrician in Aurangabad. These two are the basic neurology topics that we are going to cover. I want to tell you that you will participate in the maximum. You will be able to answer your Marathi, Hindi, English, and your concerns and queries in the chat box. Because we to go this program. But you have to do it in your way. You have to groom it in your own way. So you have to give your questions and ask your questions. And with that, I will hand over to Dr. Ashis. Dr. Ashis, are you there? Yes. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Ashis, we uh, all can hear hello. you. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, so I uh, welcome all on behalf of State NNF. Taras Agana, me welcome Karto. And you have a continuing nursing education program. We can all start this with the first lecture, uh, which will be by Dr. Praful Sanklecha. Uh, so, Sanklecha, sir, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, sir, uh, you can start your uh, lecture. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Today's my talk is on care of a normal newborn baby. As all of you know, first, first week of a life in a newborn baby is very important for the healthy survival of the baby, which lay the healthy foundation for the baby for the future life. So in today's talk, we will learn about the routine care of a normal baby. So here, the objective of this uh, webinar is to describe the evidence-based routine care of a newborn baby at and soon after birth. Here we'll see first the, what are the basic needs of a baby at birth, immediately after birth in the delivery room. What are the basic needs of a baby at birth? There are four basic needs of a baby at birth. First is the thermal protection. We should provide him warm, warm temperature. Second is normal breathing. Then mother's milk, initiation of the breastfeeding. Mother's milk is important. And fourth is the protection from infection, prevention of infection or protection from infections. So we'll see these four uh, 
needs of the baby at birth one by one. First, we will see the basic care of a normal baby at birth, immediately after birth in the delivery room. What, what are the, uh, how we can manage the immediately newborn baby. पहले अपन इसमें क्या देखेंगे कि अपन लोग हम लोग अभी क्या करते हैं रूटीनली और उसके बाद हम देखेंगे कि क्या करना चाहिए हम लोग क्या करते हैं वो पहले देख लेंगे और उसके बाद व्हाट आर द करेक्ट वेज वो करना क्या चाहिए वो हम लोग उसके बाद में देखेंगे दीज आर द टेन डूज एंड डोंट्स इन द केयर ऑफ अ नॉर्मल न्यू बॉर्न बेबी फर्स्ट दिस इज दीन ऑफ अ डिलीवरी रूम अपना यूजल स्टोरी लाइन क्या रहता है बेबी का बर्थ हुआ बेबी आपने जैसे ही बाहर निकाले हम लोग क्या करते हैं इमीजिएटली कॉर्ड क्लैम द कॉर्ड इमीजिएट वी डू द क्लैम्पिंग ऑफ द कॉर्ड उसको का कॉर्ड को कट किया उसके बाद क्या करते हैं रिसीव द बेबी अंडर वार्मर इसको बेबी को अंडर इमीजिएटली अपन लोग वार्मर के अंडर लेके चले जाते हैं उसको वार्मर में रखना चाहिए बेबी गर्म रखना चाहिए फिर थर्डली क्या करते हैं उसका माउथ सेक्शन करते हैं नोज सेक्शन करते हैं उसमें कुछ उसको कुछ एस्पिरेशन नहीं करना चाहिए इसलिए अपन लोग इमीजिएट सेक्शन करते हैं माउथ नोज सेक्शन करते हैं ठीक है उसके बाद उसको ड्राई करते हैं बेबी को अच्छे से उसको ड्राई करके कॉटन क्लोथ से उसको ड्राई कर लेते हैं उसको फिर बाद में कॉट को बिटाडिन अप्लाई करते हैं हमले कल कॉट को बिटाडिन कॉट कट करके कॉट कट करके उसको बिटाडिन अप्लाई करते हैं ठीक है उसके बाद उसके पूरे पैटर्न से चेक करते हैं नोज पैटर्न है क्या इसोफेगस उसका वो गैस्ट्रोसोफिजल ट्यूब ट्यूब उसमें जा रही क्या बरबर एनल पैटर्न से चेक कर लेते हैं पूरे पैटर्न से चेक कर लेते हैं कोई एनोमली है क्या ठीक है उसके बाद बहुत से लोग स्टमक वॉश भी कर लेते हैं कुछ मेकोनियम उसमें गया है तो उसको स्टमक नॉर्मल सलाइन से स्टमक वॉश भी कर लेते और फिर उसका जो वर्निक्स है वो जो अगली ऐसा खराब दिख रहा है इसलिए उसको भी पूरा क्लीन करके उसको एक कॉस्मेटिक टच दे देते हैं मेकिंग बेबी ब्यूटीफुल कॉस्मेटिक टच उसको दे उसको वॉश बेबी को वॉश करके ऑक्सीजन हुड के अंदर रख देते ऑक्सीजन थोड़ा बहुत उसको लगेगा भाई इसलिए रूटीनली सारे बेबी को ऑक्सीजन लगा के हुड में रख देते ये रूटीन प्रैक्टिस हम लोग करते हैं अब हम देखेंगे कि क्या करना चाहिए आइडियली मतलब ये ये लोग हम लोग प्रैक्टिस करते हैं पर अभी देखेंगे कि अपन लोग ने क्या करना चाहिए ठीक है फर्स्ट फर्स्ट एंड वेरी मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डिलीवर द बेबी ओवर मदर सेप्टम आफ्टर इमीजिएटली डिलीवरिंग द बेबी इमीजिएटली मेक द बेबी इन द स्किन कॉन्टेक्ट ऑफ द मदर ठीक है सेकेंड नो नीड ऑफ रिसीविंग द बेबी अंडर वॉर्मर ओनली सिक and small or low birth weight babies need warmer only sick and small babies need warmer so no need of receiving every baby under warmer then suction no routine suctioning is required routine intrapartum oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal suctioning for infants born with clear or even meconium stained amniotic fluid is no longer recommended you can cause the spasm of the nasopharyngeal by doing suctioning you can cause the tracheal spasm or uh, other complications then early skin to skin contact with the mother is very important for uh, his uh, warmness of the baby and initiation of the breastfeeding then you should delay the clamping of the cord or by doing the milking of the umbilical cord what are the guidelines delayed cord clamping by delaying the clamping of the cord by 1 to 3 minutes we can improve the circulation of the baby lots lot of changes we can do that by, by doing the delayed cord clamping so delayed cord clamping should be the norm rather than early cord clamping theek okay. hai then there is no need of doing the routine pattern se check theek okay. hai aajkal itne sonographies wagera hai koi anomalies wagera wo sab routinely aapko malum kar dete hai isliye there is no need of uh, doing routine pattern se check in a normal crying healthy baby there is no need for routine passage of catheter in the stomach for detection of esophageal atresia or in the nostril for detection of coanal atresia or into the rectum for detection of anorectal malformation so this pattern se check practice should be avoided then there is no need of routinely doing the stomach wash of every baby there is no role of routine stomach wash after birth to prevent any kind of gastritis in the infant is even if the infant is born through meconium stain lacquer the stomach may be aspirated to remove the content to prevent the omitting in early neonatal period okay then most important vernix is very good and it's a very protective it keeps the baby warm there is no need to remove the vernix or there is no need of early bathing 
all infants should be cleaned at birth with a clean sterile cloth to remove blood clots or meconium present on the body one should not attempt to remove the vernix from the body by any means as it can result in trauma to skin and increase the chances of infection then injection vitamin k and hepatitis b zero dose we should be given in within 24 hours immediately after birth we can give vitamin k and there is no need of routine oxygen to each and every baby to keep every baby under the oxygen route there is no need of and uh, routine oxygen healthy crying newborn baby no need of routine oxygen and last keep the cord dry the umbilical cord must be kept open and dry the nappy should be folded well below the umbilical stump no evidence that applying sprays creams or powders are any better than keeping the baby's cord clean and dry at birth okay so we come to the second point helping the baby to breathe first we have seen the uh, thermal protection and then now we we'll see the helping the baby to breathe assess the baby's breathing at the time of crying if the baby is crying vigorously or breathing adequately there is no need of intervention any need of intervention but if the baby is not breathing or gasping then skilled care in the form of positive pressure ventilation or cpr would be required so and then we will see the warm chain after delivery we have seen the delivery of the baby and then we will continue that warm chain after delivery by keeping the baby clothed and wrapped cover the head postpone the bathing particularly for small babies keep baby close to the mother use kangaroo care for stable low birth weight babies there is very important the importance of kangaroo care and show mother how to avoid the hypothermia by wrapping the baby uh, we should train train her for wrapping the baby by making folds and keeping the baby warm and then start the breastfeeding immediate initiation of the breastfeeding is very important early feeds are very important so initiation of breastfeeding keep the baby in skin to skin contact between mother's breast immediately after drying help the mother in her first few attempts to breastfeed because she is already in labor and so she is tired so help the mother in her first few attempts to breastfeed the baby make her and the baby comfortable and explain and show her proper positioning and attachment that is very important so early initiation of the breastfeeding so we can uh, help mother to start the early uh, breastfeeding these are some pictures we show the how to ensure the skin to skin contact after birth and how to initiate the feeding this is the showing the baby shows the feeding cues and is ready for breastfeeding so then we come to the prevention of infection this is the clean chain means five cleans which are defined to prevent the infections these are first is hands hands of the attendants they should be washed with soap and water they are clean hands then surface for delivery on which we uh, uh, make the delivery they should be clean then the cutting instrument for cord by means we cut the cord they are they should be uh, new some new razor blade or some autoclave blade should be there and then the string to tie cord that should be also clean and the cloth in which we wrap the baby and mother they should they are they should be clean these are the five cleans to prevent the infection at birth see these are the five five cleans to prevent the infection hand clean surface uh, clean blade clean tie and clean clothes okay this is the way very important to prevent the infection then prevention of infection after the delivery after delivery when we do give the mother to the give baby to the mother what are these uh, uh, these are uh, to keep the prevention of the infection for this the hand washing before and before and after handling the baby exclusive breastfeed which also prevent a lot of infections in the newborn baby then keep the cord clean and dry do not apply anything that is the wrong practice and use a clean cloth as a diaper or napkin and then hand wash after changing the diaper and napkin these are the prevent for preventing the infection after the delivery okay then we will come to the cord care apply a sterile tie tightly around cord at 2 cm and 5 cm from the abdomen zyada lamba ya zyada chhota bhi nahi rakhna chahiye 
cut between the ties with a sterile instrument so that uh, blood will not be oozed out and observe for oozing blood every 15 minutes if blood oozes then place a second tie you can observe for that do not apply any substance to the stump no need of antiseptic powder or no need of betadine nothing nothing is there keep the cord dry do not bind or bandage the stump some people buy the bandages around that cord that is not not needed leave the stump uncovered okay then we'll come to the eye care clean eyes immediately after birth with swab soaked in sterile water that's all use separate soap for each eye clean from medial to lateral side then give prophylactic eye drop within 1 hour of birth as per hospital policy if you see the discharge or uh, some uh, yellow is discharged then we can give the prophylactic eye, eye drops do not put anything else in the baby's eye काजल वाजल नो नीड काजल लगाने का वगैरह उससे कोई ये नहीं और जब मदर्स बोलते हैं कि हम लोग काजल डालते हैं तो उनको वही समझाना कि भाई इससे होगा तो नुकसान ही होगा कभी कंजंक्टिवाइटिस होएगा बेबी को फायदा कुछ होएगा नहीं ठीक है देन विल कम टू द डे टू डे केयर ऑफ द बेबी व्हेन वी हैंड ओवर द बेबी टू द मदर हम लोगों को क्या देखना चाहिए मॉनिटरिंग द बेबी आफ्टर दिस first thing do not leave the mother and baby alone in the first hour after birth theek okay? hai then monitor three parameters har 15 minutes ko every 15 minutes ko kya dekhna chahiye uska breathing hai kya usko kuch grunting hai kuch chest in drawing hai kuch fast breathing hai baby ko tachypnea hai breathing if is more than 60 per minute then we should check the temperature of the baby by by by, by using your hands only you can check the baby is warm or cold feet are cold or warm we should check the warm and then color evaluate the color of the trunk and extremities if baby sinus or uh, becoming blue so we should check out this three parameters every 15 minutes breathing warmth and color so in the end we see the key messages what we have learned the four basic needs at birth are warmth the normal breathing establishing of the normal breathing and uh, initiation of the breastfeeding and prevention of the infections then ensure the warm by skin to skin contact with mother's chest and abdomen or abdomen and help the mother to initiate the early breastfeeding and follow who5 cleans to prevent infections thank you जसवंत मैडम प्रफुल सर हेलो 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 हाँ हाँ जसवंत मैडम है कौन आशीष कर रहा है क्या कर रहे आगे का शुरू करना है कैसा है ये वो आशीष आशीष करेंगे आकाश आकाश सर आशीष इफ यू आर नॉट देयर देन आई कैन कंपेयर आई कैन एक्ट एज ए लास्ट मिनट कंपेयर ओके सो आई थिंक आशीष इज बिजी 
so uh, thank you so much dr praful sanklecher for that wonderful and very pictorial presentation of what should be done and what should not be done and uh, very rightly portrayed and very nicely portrayed in what is usual practice and what should not be done and then you brought about uh, very nicely what should be done so thank you so much dr sanklecha next i invite dr abhay jain who is the pediatric intensivist and neonatologist he is uh, a national instructor of iip indian academy of pediatrics and national neonatology forum for neonatal resuscitation for golden hour emergency management for pediatric advanced life support and many other courses so uh, dr abhay jain from aurangabad i request you to start your uh, talk please thank you thank you very much sir uh, for this uh, introduction and uh, first of all let me thank uh, dr rishikesh sir dr jaisal madam uh, and uh, the whole team for inviting and giving this opportunity to speak in front of uh, this audience uh, let me start with today's topic is assessment of sick newborn and uh, me doni tini languages me freely use karnare kadhi marathi bolel kadhi hindi bolel kadhi इंग्लिश मध्य बोले ट्राई टू जेवड सोप करते जमेल प्रयत्न करेल कि सोप करेल गोष्टी ठीक है नाउ नाउ द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ टुडेज टॉक इज टू डॉक्यूमेंट द बेसलाइन क्लिनिकल स्टेटस टू आइडेंटिफाई एनी चेंज फ्रॉम बेसलाइन स्टेटस खुद का होता कि न्यूबॉर्न जेव अपने जन्माला आल कि अपने कड़े एडमिट कि बगित एक प्रकार जिथे बेसलाइन जर आप चेंजेस अपन डिसाइड करू शको पी बेसलाइन नॉर्मल है कि नहीं महती रह गरजे पहले नॉर्मल पेशंट की बेसलाइन का है पुढ़े हो रहे चेंजेस अपने आइडेंटिफाई करता टू डिलिवर सेफ एंड क्वालिटी के एक मुख्य उद्देश्य पाजे कि आप पेशंट जो कहीं आउटकम है तो इम्प्रूव करते डू द एसेसमेंट ऑफ सिक्नी बॉन वी नीड टू डू क्लिनिकल मॉनिटरिंग एंड दिस इज द सोल इम्पॉर्टंट थिंग विच इज रिक्वायर्ड टू any good outcome and it has to be done in no touch technique this is only by two things one is ek dolane bagun ek dusra kanane apun majority times tumhala yacha vyatirikta tisri gosht garaj padat nahi at least in the beginning you can start with that and why i am insisting on this thing is khub da aplyala savay aste ka hai thoda sa hat laun bagu kay hot ugat vina karan apan hat lavto and ani he je vina karan hat lavna asto Uh, that increases the chances of infections in the babies and that uh, is a problematic thing that changes the outcome now what do you see ekda tumhi bagayla suruvat keli baby tumcha samor ala ani tar tumhala bagaycha kay hai tyachat te aplyala decide karaycha we will see a simple cbc not that we do regularly this is a different cbc which we do this is first we we'll look for consciousness second we will look for breathing and third we will look for color तीन ही फिर बगे अपने हाथ तिघा ही बढ़ाई अपने पेशंट हाथ लाइन गरज नहीं बाला हाथ लाने की गरज नहीं एंड ये सबसे आसान चीज हम लोग कर सकते हैं सिर्फ अच्छे से अगर गौर से हम लोग देखे और उसमें से अपने जो भी फाइंडिंग्स निकालना है निकालने की कोशिश करे तो ठीक है कमिंग टू फर्स्ट फर्स्ट सी इज कॉन्शियसनेस इन दिस मेजोरिटी टाइम्स वॉट we see is whether the child is drowsy sleepy sleepy hai to theek hai sleepy or drowsy mein humko differentiate karna hai alert hai crying hai ya non responsive hai now if you look for drowsy child uh, even if you give a stimulus stimulus dene ke baad bhi patient agar respond nahi karta hai ya it is not completely responding the way we want is one which is a problematic thing second a hyper alert child we new one we don't expect first three four days neonate mein ki ekdam alert uh, milega apne ko but hyper alert child is a problem third is cry jo crying babies rehte hai wo kis type ka cry hai uske upar bhi bahut important cheeze depend rehti hai crying madhe mainly kya hota ki uh, shrill cries hota 
तो एक आयडेंटिफाय करता जमला पाहिजे जशी मांजर ओरडते तसं जर काय असेल तर इट सजेस्ट टू थिंग्स मेनली देर इज रेस्ड इंटरक्रेनल प्रेशर और देर इज हायपॉक्सिक मेनली दिस टू थिंग्स आर देअर बिकॉज ऑफ विच द चाइल्ड इज हॅव्हिंग श्रिल क्राय क्राय करत नाही विक क्राय आणि ड्राउजी पडलेला आहे तर डेफिनेटली द चाइल्ड इज प्रॉब्लेमॅटिक वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू रीच टू अ डायग्नॉसिस आता आपल्याला डायग्नॉसिस करायचंच नाही आपल्याला फक्त हा बाळ त्रासदायक आहे त्याला प्रॉब्लेम आहे की नाही आहे फक्त एवढं आयडेंटिफाय करायचं आणि आहे तर पुढे काय करायचं तेवढं डिस्पॉन्स क्राय करायचं अँड इफ द चाइल्ड इज टोटली अनरिस्पॉन्सिव्ह इट इज अन इमर्जन्सी अँड यू नीड टू इंटरव्हिन इमिडिएटली इन दॅट केस लिथार्जिक आहे ड्रावजी हे समजा थोडं सक्सुस्त पडलेलं आहे फुल टर्म मध्ये जर जो पहिले जर फीड व्यवस्थित करत होता आणि आता जर ड्राव लिथार्जिक आहे आणि सक करत नाहीये तर डेफिनेटली दिस इज अन अबनॉर्मल थिंग आणि त्याला इम्पॉर्टन्स देणं गरजेचं आहे प्रीटर्म बेबीज मध्ये दिस मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ मेनी थिंग्स अँड कोल्ड स्ट्रेस असेल इमेच्युरिटी असेल याच्यामुळे पण असतं पण त्याला आपण व्यवस्थित बघून पुढे ठरवू शकतो पण लिथार्जी आणि पुअर सकिंगला इम्पॉर्टन्स देणं खूप गरजेचं आहे आय विल गिव्ह यू सम मोर एक्झाम्पल्स ऑफ सिक चाइल्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस ठीक आहे आणि ह्याला कसं इम्पॉर्टन्स द्यायचं ते दाखवतो ठीक आहे दिस चाइल्ड इफ यू सी हिज आईज आर ओपन इज ब्लिंकिंग इज आईज तुम्ही आईजवर जर बघाल तर ह्याच्यात ह्या व्हिडिओमध्ये एवढं स्पष्ट नाही आहे पण आईज सुरुवातीला जर बघितलं तर आताही तो ब्लिंक करतो तो यू विल से दिस चाइल्ड इज अलर्ट कॉन्शियस पण तसं नाही आहे दिस चाइल्ड इवन इफ यू फील दॅट इट इज अलर्ट कॉन्शियस द चाइल्ड इज हॅव्हिंग अबनॉर्मल मुवमेंट्स आणि हे कन्व्हर्जन्स चालू आहेत ठीक आहे सो दिस इज वन एक्झाम्पल आकाश सर यू व्हिडिओ दिसतोय ना सगळ्यांना येस अब व्हिडिओ इज व्हेरी मच विजिबल अँड ऑडिबल नाही कारण काय आता खूपदा व्हिडिओ चालू केले की मग प्रॉब्लेम येतात दॅट्स वाय आवाज असते चालेल ना लुकिंग ॲट द सेकंड व्हिडिओ आता इथेही आपल्याला वाटेल की अरे बच्चू तर चांगलं हालतय व्यवस्थित काम करतय ठीक आहे मध्ये मध्ये थोडेसे माइल्ड का होईना थोडेसे डोळे पण उघडतोय ठीक आहे डोळे उघडताना पण दिसतात आवाज पण करतोय रडतो पण आहे तर आपल्याला वाटेल की यार द चाइल्ड इज कॉन्शियस बट जस्ट बिंग कॉन्शियस इन दिस केस इज नॉट गोईंग टू हेल्प अँड इथे याला सायक्लिकल मुवमेंट्स आपण म्हणतो आणि दिज आर ऑल्सो अ टाईप ऑफ कन्व्हर्जन्स इफ यू सी दिस वन हे रडण्याचा आवाज दुसऱ्या बाळाचा आहे या बाळाचा नाही आहे हिअर इफ यू सी द चाइल्ड इज लिटल लिथार्जिक इन दिस केस आणि बाळाला इथे पण सायक्लिकल मुवमेंट्स दिसत आहेत तुम्हाला सो दिज आर द केसेस वेअर अपरंटली वरतून असं वाटतं की यार बाळ थोडस चांगलं आहे पण त्यांना न्युरोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लेम आहे मुवमेंट्स जरी चांगले दिसत असले तरी त्यांना प्रॉब्लेम असतात ठीक आहे तर ह्याच्यात मेनली आपण जे बघितलं की काय गोष्टी बघायच्यात आपल्याला ड्रॉजी आहे का ठीक आहे क्राईंग आहे तर श्रिल क्राय आहे की नॉर्मल क्राय आहे तो बघायचा अनरिस्पॉन्सिव्ह आहे का आणि जर अनरिस्पॉन्सिव्ह नाही आहे तर देन यू कॅन टेक लिटल मोर टाइम टू युवेल्युएट डिसाईड अँड देन टेक नेक्स्ट स्टेप्स बट इफ द चाइल्ड इज अनरिस्पॉन्सिव्ह so then you should not waste uh, your time you should directly uh, take next steps ani pude padayla pahije now uh, second step cbc cha dusra jo step ahe to ahe b that is breathing this is one more important thing jo aplyala lakshya dyaycha hai tyachat aplyala fakt bagun tharvaycha hai ki rate kay khubda takipni asto shwas fast ghet astat ba tar rate jar jasta ase tar tasha paristhitit आपल्याला बाळाला त्रास काय आहे आणि काय नाही त्याच्यावर बघावं लागतं वर्क ऑफ ब्रिदिंग कसं आहे मेजल फ्ले फ्लेअरिंग आहे का सुप्रास्टर्नल रिट्रॅक्शन्स आहेत का सबकॉस्टल आणि इंटरकॉस्टल रिट्रॅक्शन्स आहेत का आणि कुठे कुठे ऑडिबल साऊंड्स आहेत का जसं ग्रंट आहे किंवा स्ट्रायडर आहे अशा गोष्टी काय ऐकू येतात का विल सी फ्यू एक्झाम्पल्स ऑफ दॅट 
बिफोर वी गो फॉर एक्साम्पल एक जस्ट स्कोरिंग सीस्टम एक दिल्ली जी आप बो शो कि जर रेस्पिरेटरी रेट लेस देन सिक्सटी तर देन इट इज अ गुड थिंग नो रिट्रैक्शन नो सायनोसिस नो ग्रंट एयर एंट्री जर सी चांगली है दिस इज एब्सुल्यूटली अ नॉर्मल रेस्पिरेटरी सीस्टम रेट जर जा सिक्सटी ट्वेंटी कि रिट्रैक्शन है मैल टू मॉडरेट सायनोसिस है ऑन एयर ग्रंट आल हॉस्पिटेशन वर एयर एंट्री रिड्यूस यू कैन पुट वन स्कोर टू ईच आणि स्कोर जर दोन पेक्षा जास्त द्यायचा असेल तर मॉडरेट टू सिव्हिअर रिट्रॅक्शन मोर देन फॉर्टी पर्सेंट एफ आर टू ची गरज ऑडिबल ग्रँड आणि एअर एंट्री ऍबसेंट असेल आणि रेस्पिरेटरी रेट मोर देन एटी असेल तर यू कॅन गिव्ह टू स्कोर जरुरी नाही की एकाच पेशंट मध्ये एकाच काइंड चे स्कोर भेटतील रेस्पिरेटरी रेट कमी असेल पण रिट्रॅक्शन मॉडरेट टू सिव्हिअर असू शकतात सायनोसिस नसेल पण ग्रंट असू शकतात सो यू मे हॅव टू मिक्स अँड मॅच द स्कोर कुठे स्कोर झिरो टाकाल कुठे वन कुठे टू टाकाल आणि त्याप्रमाणे आपल्याला निर्णय घ्यावा लागतील की त्याचा ओव्हरऑल रेस्पिरेशन कसं आहे हिअर ह्या फोटोमध्ये एक दाखवण्याचा प्रयत्न केला रिट्रॅक्शन सबकॉस्टल कसे असतात मी व्हिडिओमध्ये पण दाखवेल तुम्हाला ठीक आहे सी दिस फर्स्ट व्हिडिओ की इफ यू सी रिट्रॅक्शन जर बघितलं तुम्ही तर त्याच्यात दिसत सबकॉस्टल रिट्रॅक्शन विथ निजल फेअरिंग इथे दिसेल तुम्हाला आणि याचं तात्पर्य काय ते पण सांगतो इथे जर बघाल तुम्ही तर काय होत आहे की रेस्पिरेशन जो आहे खूप शॅलो रेस्पिरेशन आहे म्हणजे खूप काही जास्त रेस्पिरेशन घेत नाहीये मध्येच छोटे छोटे रेस्पिरेशन मध्येच ऍपनिया पण होता एक छोटासा शोधावं लागतं की कुठे श्वास चालू आहे ठीक आहे आता एक मोठा थोडासा श्वास घेतला बट अदरवाइज श्वास बंद होता तो तो इन दिस थ्री सिच्युएशन वॉट वी सॉ वॉज अर्लियर इफ यू सी रेड इंटरप्ट फॉर अ मोमेंट हो सर yeah uh, uh, i think the chat may not be visible to you that's why i wanted to give you a feedback there okay. are repeated comments in chat box saying that it will be good if you use uh, hindi rather than marathi there are some people who are not very fluent in marathi okay sure no problem okay now i was been uh, told earlier to go ahead with this language a mix of all that's why i was uh, using this thing yeah no i think problem. i think hindi oh. hindi would be fine okay absolutely uh, no problem sir so we will decide on uh, rate rate if it is more definitely it is problem that suggests that the requirement of the child of either oxygenation which is reaching less to the child or he wants to remove more carbon dioxide either of the two is there because of which the rate of the child respiratory rate has increased one thing second more than rate we are worried about the work of breathing लाईक वी हॅव सीन अभी जो हमने देखा की सबकॉस्टल रिट्रॅक्शन का एक व्हिडिओ देखा था हमने एक नेजल फ्लेअरिंग का व्हिडिओ है ये दोन चीज जो है इसमे वर्क ऑफ ब्रिदिंग ऑफ द चाइल्ड हॅज इन्क्रीज अँड बिकॉज ऑफ वर्क ऑफ चाइल्ड ऑफ द ब्रिदिंग हॅज वर्क ऑफ ब्रिदिंग हॅज इन्क्रीज द चाइल्ड हॅज टू टेक अ फोर्सफुल ब्रेथ विच मे ही मे सस्टेन फॉर सम फ्यू मिनिट्स आर्स अँड डेफिनेटली द चाइल्ड इन ड्यू कोर्स ऑफ टाइम विल गो इन फटीक and will need assistance in future so before you reach to that stage you should be able to pick up okay this is a problematic kid this child needs support either in terms of oxygenation or ventilation in whatever way and we should be able to provide that support at appropriate time so our job apna kaam rahega ki hum log ye pick up kare aur aage pass on kare ki aisa aisa problem hai ab rate mein ek dusra jo pehlu hai हमने ज्यादा का तो बात कर लिया अब अगर कम है जैसा लास्ट वीडियो मैंने दिखा है जिसमें बहुत कम ब्रीदिंग एक्सकर्शन दिख रहे थे वॉज नॉट अ इफेक्टिव ब्रीदिंग एज सच वन और टू ब्रेथ विच वेर लिटिल बेटर बट मोस्ट ऑफ देम वेर शैलो ब्रीदिंग जिसको हम कहते हैं कि जिसमें बहुत कुछ ज्यादा मूवमेंट्स नहीं थी दिस इज अ वेरी डेंजरस सिचुएशन देर यू नीड टू एक्ट इमिडिएटली 
because in that situation the respiration may have stopped or will stop any time and you may need to give him assisted ventilation uh, in such situation so uh, instead of waiting and seeing ki what happens aap logo ko turant se turant jaldi se jaldi usko act karna padega now coming to audible uh, sounds we have seen one or two audible sounds in this uh, i'll go to the next one yeah in in this initial four or five breaths which the child will be taking aap logo ko acche se sunai dega see here the child was having retractions and simultaneously the child was having uh, strider also uh immediately after birth if the child has strider you may have to intervene and see what is the reason for strider but this is if it is an older child you may have some uh, time aapke paas thoda waqt rahega but strider grunt wheeze all these three things are not normal and they have to be picked up significantly ab aap differentiate kaise karoge तो वीज आपको ऊपर से सुनाई नहीं देगी इतना समझ के चलो बहुत रेयर होगा कि आपको वीज बिना स्थितोस्कोप के सुनाई दे रही फर्स्ट सेकंड स्ट्राइडर और ग्रंट में डिफरेंशिएट ऐसा करना है जब बच्चों सांस अंदर ले रहा है तब अगर आपको आवाज आता है जैसे इस केस में आ रहा था तो एट दैट टाइम इट इज स्ट्राइडर और ग्रंट जो होता है जनरली जब सांस बाहर छोड़ता है तब ग्रंट आना शुरू होता है और वीज भी जनरली आता है पर वीज आपको ऊपर से सुनाई नहीं देगी सो सो इफ इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू हियर ऊपर से कुछ सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है तो डेफिनेटली स्ट्राइडर और इसको तो बाजू में कर दो पर वीज तो डेफिनेटली आपको ऊपर से सुनाई नहीं देगी तो उसके बारे में आप बेफिक्र रही है ठीक है नाउ आफ्टर दिस ब्रीदिंग इज डन आई थिंक ब्रीदिंग आई एम नॉट मिसिंग ऑन एनीथिंग uh regarding the synopsis and color part we will uh, come I means if you look at the synopsis i have not touched i'll come to that thing during the color uh, part when i am taking uh, taking that uh, part of the topic uh air entry actually uh, speaking you will have to touch the patient at this time to determine the air entry and uh, bilaterally air entry has to be seen there are many reasons for which unilateral uh, air entry might be reduced uh, it may be because of a meconium plug it may be because of pneumothorax uh, that side of the chest movements might be reduced because of the air entry is reduced on that side so you will have to confirm whether the air entry is equal and that has to be done by auscultating the child without that you cannot do so on observation you can get a lot of information you don't have to really go ahead and see uh, whether the air entry is equal or not if you are able to do a good observation you will be able to find out a lot of information just by seeing and hear if you do this two, two things in a good way most of the information is gathered what remains is uh, we can add later now coming to color now normally we expect color to be pink okay but not that every child will have pink color there are many uh, diseases there are many problems where the color of the child will not be pink but if your trunk and extremities both are pink child is stable in terms of circulation if your trunk is pale uh, sorry pink and extremities are pale the child is in an early shock or you can call it cold stress and if your trunk is pink but extremities are blue dusky you are either in cold stress or you are having congenital heart disease now here uh, extremities dusky can be seen in newborn during the initial period of life what we call as acrocyanosis okay if acrocyanosis is present don't jump to conclusion or cyanosis is cyanosis is cyanosis it is a very common thing in first few hours of life uh, but definitely you will have to look for the temperature of the child and keep the child warm if you are finding extremities to be blue or dusky now coming to cyanosis cyanosis there are two things there is peripheral cyanosis and central cyanosis peripheral cyanosis as i told you is normal at birth which we call as acrocyanosis and seen in extremities due to cold 
whereas central cell nervousness is always abnormal it is never normal and it needs appropriate referral you can say or needs proper evaluation it is seen mainly on the tongue and mucosa and indicates either cardiac or pulmonary disease if you see in the first picture here you see this are the acrocyanosis which is present if you see the same uh, child's leg these are blue or you can call purple in color and these are normal things if you see compare the pink lips the pink lips in this kid also and the extremities are blue this is very normal okay but if this happens in a 1 month old child or 15 days old child this is not normal asha aise condition mein aapko kya karna hai to aapko pehle evaluate karna hai ki circulation baby ka normal hai ya nahi the most probable cause is agar aap thandi ke season mein aap ye dekhoge to bahut sare bachcho ko milta hai the child will be cold and this is a warning sign that you should warm the child so that the uh, hypothermia does not increase which is a very very common and very big problem which can lead to a lot of complications in due course of time if we don't intervene and correct the things at moment see central sinusitis is there you are going to act i am not saying no theek hai wo dikhne ke baad to sab ko ek act karenge hum log ye dekhna cha rahe ki jab central sinusitis nahi hai उस टाइम पे सिर्फ पेरिफेरल साइनोसिस है उस टाइम पे आप लोग क्या करते हो न्यूबॉर्न के टाइम पे आप आराम से रुको लेट द टाइम टेक्स आप उसको वार्म रखो वेट करो और रहा देखो टू इम्प्रूव बट यही अगर एक महीना बड़ा बच्चा है या पंद्रह दिन बड़ा बच्चा है एंड इफ यू फाइंड दिस दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लमेटिक थिंग यू नीड टू इमरजेंसी ऑन इमरजेंसी बेसिस वॉर्म द चाइल्ड रैप द चाइल्ड लुक फॉर पल्सिस इवेलुएट द रेस्ट ऑफ द सिस्टम and then decide whether this is a problematic thing or not problematic rest of the system ke evaluate karna hai and i'll coming to that thing in future now coming to temperature now this is in continuation with the color which we have seen see if you see uh, a child is having dusky extremities or uh, like i have shown early and if you feel the temperature of the extremities the extremities are suppose if they are warm and the uh, color is not good then it is a different ball game we'll look into it little uh, later but if the extremities are cold and dusky look at the central temperature and if that is warm definitely it is cold stress trunk agar aapka uh, warm hai or extremities cold hai or dusky hai so definitely you are in cold stress if your trunk is also cold and your extremities are also cold you are in hypothermia but you should not wait for the patient to land up in this stage so you should act early when the extremities start becoming cold suppose if a child has come to you from outside and the patient is showing you and the extremities are cold the first thing you should ask is hath mo je pehnao pair mo je pehnao topi pehnao or usko sweater pehnao aur garam karne rakho and simultaneously you can look for assessment assessing the Uh, for the thing check for the temperature 36.5 to 37.5 degree celsius is the normal temperature and axillary to core mismatch more than 3 degree celsius is indication for sepsis so rectal temperature you will take and axillary temperature you will take and you will differentiate between the two and if it is more than 3 degree celsius it is sepsis heart rate now if uh, again we will be correlating all the three together probably in next few uh, slides we will be doing all this things simultaneously if suppose your child now has come to you you are seeing the child is drowsy listless lying on the bed not crying much extremities are cold and you are having bradycardia either you are having hypothermia because of which bradycardia is there less than 100 you need to act again if having tachycardia more than 180 degrees uh, the reasons might be n number of reasons physiological might be cry fever anemia shock sepsis drugs arrhythmia shock and sepsis are far most common in terms of diseases otherwise crying and fever are uh, very routinely seen uh, in uh, sorry cry is very routinely seen fever sometimes definitely is seen in that kind if the heart rate is not varying with the movements of the child or the heart rate is fixed at what particular place 
then definitely it is because of the heart block and you need to evaluate from that point of time. So you should be able to uh, decide whether after seeing the CBC, that is the consciousness breathing color, you look, you, you have to not touch the patient. You will look for temperature, or sorry, uh, core temperature and the axillary temperature. And after you look for temperature, you need to see the heart rate. And heart rate simultaneously, uh, uh, you apply a pulse oximeter and evaluate for uh, pulse rate also. On pulse oximeter also, you can see. And simultaneously, you need to auscultate the child and measure the heart rate of the child. There can be discrepancies in the both. That's why. Once you apply the pulse oximeter, you have to see two, three things. Well, first of all, uh, the pulse oximeter use karna wagare wo apne bas ki baat nahi hai ye talk ka par if in newborn period if you get straps or y shaped jo aate hain jo hum kaan ke paas bhi laga sakte hain these are better instead of the chimte lagane to chimte lagane mein problem nahi hai par uh, they will cause unnecessary pressure on the limbs simultaneously uh, with the movement they will come out and these are the practical problems which we face. So every time you will have to apply it, again it will move the leg and it will come out. Then you both sorry start sticking laga karakte usko, uska pressure bad jata hai, pair dab jata hai. All these problems start coming. So so uh, better use straps or uh, why why wala jata hai. You can use it on fingers also, on the wrist also, but uh, on earlobes also. So you apply the pulse oximeter. After applying pulse oximeter, before jumping to the numbers, okay, 80%. Before jumping to the numbers, look for the waveform. You have a waveform here. Sorry. You have a waveform here. So look for the waveform, whether it is properly formed wave or not. And once you see a proper waveform going on for some particular time, and then what reading comes on the screen, that is important. See, as soon as you apply, if the child is moving limb and you don't have a proper waveform and it is showing 100% or it is showing 60%, both these values has got no meaning at all. When a regular waveform is there, that means proper signals are reaching to the uh, machine and then the interpretation what the machine has done, that is useful. Otherwise, when it is moving and in that moment, if you are trying to judge what is the SPO2, then it is of no use. Okay. Now, what we find, if suppose the child is having SPO2 is low, definitely if SPO2 is low, the child is having hypoxia, definitely trying, the child will try to improve his hypoxia by increasing the respiratory rate. So, what uh, body will do is, will increase the respiratory rate and you will get tachypnea. In that also, if you are need for oxygen does not suffice, then you increase the efforts and you start getting retractions. So uh, re uh, interpretation should be hypoxia in that case. You are having peripheries are dusky, but SPO2 is normal. Definitely you are having cold stress or abnormal hemoglobin, that is methemoglobin. If you are having tachypnea and your SPO2 is fluctuating, it remains on 80 for some time with good good waveform. Eh? That is a prerequisite for everything. A good waveform is prerequisite for everything. So you are having a good waveform and you are having 80 saturation and within next one minute, it increases to 100. After 10 minutes, again, it goes back to 75, 80, 85. So this happens mostly in uh, uh, persistent pulmonary hypertension kind of thing. If you are having tachypnea, Upper limbs are showing normal SPO2 and lower limbs are showing low SPO2. This is because of shunt or severe PPHN. Uh, the blood is getting transferred from the patent ductus arteriosus and that's why the upper limb is showing oxygenated blood which is better uh, perfused 
and the limb which are lower limb are getting uh, unoxygenated blood which is bypassed from the lung through the patent ductus arteriosus and that's why the lower limb has low spo2 if there is tachypnea and there is no spo2 improvement even after giving 100% oxygen mostly cyanotic heart disease which is responsible for that target 90 to 94 and uh, if the child is able to maintain uh, spo2 uh, more than 90 to 94 ke aas pass don't start oxygen to this child if the child is able to maintain just for the sake of fear if the severe distress is there then it is different issue but thoda tachypnea hai 92 93 borderline rare hai oxygen saturation unnecessary don't start oxygen because oxygen is a drug and it is to be used judiciously know that aaya to laga nahi hai ye concept mat rakho with oxygen Uh, we need to uh, look into the things uh, with a pinch of salt in this cases Now, coming to blood pressure now simply assessing the blood pressure is a, a tough job because most of the units where uh, small cuffs may avail may be available may not be available in opd you may not get this thing uh, in ipd if you don't have an an issue you may not have all kind of uh, sizes which are needed so assessing uh, blood pressure is a tough thing first thing but it is not that we cannot do and it is not that we should not do. we should look after blood pressure why but blood pressure to be assessed only alone is not required before that we can get a lot of information from what we have discussed up till now and one or two things which are remaining i am going to cover in next few slides now if we have seen heart rate if heart rate is more if your respiratory rate is more color is low temperature is down probably the child is in shock and in such cases sensory is down in such cases you don't need blood pressure to tell you that the child is in shock if suppose the blood pressure is in normal range still the child is in shock and you need to treat the child at that moment itself usi time pe aapko treat karna shuru karna padega because waiting for the hypotension to come in is not a good thing hypotension aane ke baad koi bhi detect kar lega hai bas uske baad aapki aur meri zarurat nahi padegi ki isko shock hai bolne ke liye theek hai na hypotension is a late sign of shock where every damn person will determine कि हाँ आप तो ये शौक में हैं आपकी होशियारी उसी में रहेगी जब आप उसको वो स्टेज पे जाने से पहले पिक करो एंड यू आस्क हुएवर आपके जो भी सबॉर्डिनेट्स कलीग्स या सीनियर्स रहेंगे उनको बोलो कि ओके दिस एंड दिस इज द थिंग यू नीड टू इंटरवीन एंड वंस यू इंटरवीन इफ यू फाइंड द एबनॉर्मलिटी इज गेटिंग करेक्टेड दैट इज वॉट अ गुड मॉनिटरिंग एंड असेसमेंट वुड बी हाइपोटेंशन में जाने के बाद तो ठीक है सब लोग ही करने वाले हैं उसके बाद कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है उसके पहले करो तो ये फायदे की चीज है ठीक है सो हियर एज आई टोल्ड यू देर आर टू थ्री कैबिट्स इन दिस थिंग आपको पहले तो साइज ऑफ कफ आपका मॉनिटर उतना अच्छा होना चाहिए साइज ऑफ कफ अच्छे होने चाहिए अवेलेबल होने चाहिए आपके साथ और तीसरा यू शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ द नॉर्मल रेंजेस फॉर प्री टर्म एंड टर्म सो देन ओनली यू विल बी एबल टू कमेंट और कंक्लूड ऑन ब्लड प्रेशर टिल दैट टाइम डोंट ठीक है नाउ दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग एज सुन एज यू सी ए पेशेंट एज आई टोल्ड यू यू आर डूइंग गोइंग टू डू सी बी सी यू आर गोइंग टू लुक फॉर टेम्परेचर यू आर गोइंग टू लुक फॉर हार्ट रेट यू आर गोइंग टू लुक फॉर uh blood pressure if you have but you are going to look for pulse oximeter believe me you will going to you are going to look for pulse oximeter and after that look for sugar no sign is pathognomonic for hypoglycemia aapko kitna bhi acha hasta khelta baby upar se dikh jaye uski sugar 40 nikal sakti hai theek hai so so and whatever the amount of sick child you see and if you uh, treat uh, means if you check in that the sugar may be normal in that cases so 
on clinical grounds don't try to just sugar just do it and finish the job you know as soon as you see the child it is definitely needed that you show, uh, check once sugar and decide especially in those cases who are at risk newborns like those who are for small for gestational age idm mother is having uh, gestational diabetes or diabetes itself and in that if suppose sugar is more than 40 45 uh you can uh, more than 45 you can relax if less than 45 you need to inform and uh, take uh, further steps if simultaneously the child is having symptoms of hypoglycemia like the child is lethargic not responding uh even if you give stimulus the child is not moving properly feeding is less in those situations if the sugar is low it is an emergency situation you should act immediately because now it is a symptomatic hypoglycemia which is definitely an emergency the more you delay in diagnosing and treating this the more damage is going to happen to the brain and that damage is irreversible ek bar jo damage ho jayega wo wapas palat ke nahi aa sakega so act as soon as you see and complete this assessment and in that don't miss the sugar part note for urine output uh you may not be able to uh, evaluate the urine output immediately as soon as the patient comes but you should ask the history uh, to the pa- uh, patient's relatives and when the ch- patient is admitted in your unit and if you are seeing the child regularly then you should uh, be able to quantify the urine uh we have uh, this this if you see this photograph the uh, this one are urostomy uh, bags which are uh, practically in neonatal age group are not used but uh, the smaller bags which we call it as mini combs they are very commonly used and without uh, intervening from uh, means instead of putting a catheter and evaluating you can measure the urine output and it should be a habit of each of the unit for each of the patient you should apply this mini comb max and measure urine output in this sick babies if the urine output is less than 1 cc per kg per hour oligouria 1 2 5 cc is normal and more than 5 cc per kg per hour is polyuria i think that we can detect later on whether the urine but when you see the first time ask what was the last time the baby has passed urine the baby has not passed urine for 6 hours the child is in trouble definitely because probably the intake was not there the child is in shock n number of reasons because of which the patient has not passed urine don't apply this thing in first 24 hours of life first 24 hours mein zaruri nahi hai ki usne pass karne chahiye to a newborn comes to your uh, uh, unit Uh, delivered two hours back and you are behind are 2 ghanta ho gaya 4 ghanta ho gaya you didn't pass ki atalo isko kehte hain no you don't do that okay so so when when uh, it is a newborn which is brought to your unit then uh, you may take it uh, easily but if suppose a 15 day old child comes with a history of not passing urine for 6 hours you should act immediately capillary refill time एक सीआरटी बीच में मैंने बताया था आपको जब हम एसेस द परफ्यूजन कर रहे थे विद ब्लड प्रेशर के साथ तब सीआरटी में देख रहे थे तो इट इंडिकेट्स टिश्यू परफ्यूजन जैसे हमने कलर देखा था कलर गुलाबी रहना जरूरी है वैसे कैपिलरी रिफिल टाइम भी नॉर्मल रहना जरूरी है इट इंडिकेट्स टिश्यू परफ्यूजन नॉर्मल सीआरटी दिस इज एन ओल्ड स्लाइड अप टू फाइव सेकेंड्स यू कैन कंसिडर इट एज नॉर्मल and if suppose it is prolonged more than 5 seconds then 10 ml per kg of normal bolus is to be given you have to look for hypotension hypothermia acidosis and number of causes but all related to mostly leading to decreased perfusion and once you know that perfusion is decreased you know that heart rate will be increased your color will go down your urine output will go down your blood pressure will go down everything is going to get affected so it is one of the tools to assess the perfusion like we assess the consciousness we assess the uh, respiration we are assessing the circulation by using all these tools how do you see okay. yes ma'am it's already 5 o'clock just ma'am last uh, slide going on yeah uh, 
uh, we assess it by uh, pressing it uh, on the trunk. Don't look at the peripheries, extremities, pe mat dekhye, because uh, in cold situation, when the child is uh, born immediately and uh, in cold stress, you are going to get delayed capillary refill time. So instead of uh, looking at there, you look at the center, uh, apply pressure uh, till you blanch the nail bed uh, and uh, release it and see how much time it takes to refill. And according to that, you decide. Abnormal weight loss pattern, when the child is admitted in your place or comes and if there is more than 10% of breath, uh, birth weight which is lost in terms, uh, more than 15% in three terms, uh, definitely it is an abnormal thing and you should intervene at that. So, uh, whenever you are seeing a child, clinical monitoring is the key. Instead of going for fancy investigations and things, you look for clinical monitoring, assess the well-being by just observing and hearing by CBC and assess the vital parameters baseline and note for any change. Like I told you, uh, tachycardia, bradycardia, tachypnea, bradypnea and systemic analytical and com uh, be systematic analytical and comprehensive in your assessment. So whatever findings you are seeing, don't jump to conclusion by seeing a single finding. Try to mix all the findings together and then come to conclusion, okay, this is the problem and you need to tackle it in this way. Just a single finding is abnormal and you are jumping to conclusions is not going to You collect all the information and then come to a conclusion. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, ma'am. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Abhay. I think it was a very uh, nice and comprehensive uh, presentation. And in a very short time, you uh, summarized uh, the the identification of sick newborn in a very comprehensive way. So uh, friends, uh, it was a pleasure to witness today two very, uh, uh, very grounded and two very basic presentations. So uh, the first presentation, uh, normal newborn care. So uh, just wanted to uh, uh, summarize it in a different way. So when we teach uh, medical students, we always say that uh, what are the needs of a normal newborn? So Dr. Sankalecha told us four needs of the normal newborn. So I always teach that every newborn wants to be fit. What is be fit? B for breathing. So he wants that breath should be started. F for feeding. I for infection prevention. And T for temperature regulation. So be fit is the mantra that we want to follow while taking care of a normal newborn. Secondly, in the care of normal newborn, Two or three most important things which have changed in last 10 years include delivering on abdomen, skin to skin contact to be initiated early and as early as possible and delayed cord clamping. And if you remember the first few points, five, six points given by Dr. Sankalecha, you will realize that all these, if you, you can uh, do, you can perform these three or four things almost together. Just put the baby on mother's abdomen that already takes care of delivering on mother's abdomen, takes care of skin to skin, and it also gives you some time to do drying and other things so that the cord clamping is delayed. Third important thing is that meconium management is no way different than a non-meconium stained baby. So current recommendation is meconium baby, nothing is to be done differently. Fourth important thing that I always find must be stressed is we, we have been now talking of delayed cord clamping, de delayed cord clamping for a while. Many people feel that delayed cord cutting is what is important. Please remember this is delayed cord clamping and not cutting. So if you clamp the cord immediately and then cut after three minutes, you're not doing any good. That is as good as immediate cord clamping. So uh, what is being discussed and what is being recommended here is delay the cord clamping by one to three minutes. Uh, so that was about the first talk. And second talk was very nicely summarized by Dr. Abhay. Uh, three things we need to look at. CBC, vital parameters, and sugar and CRT. Uh, and uh, in vital parameters, we also include SPO2 now. So these are a few things that we must uh, look at. And while he was talking uh, about the first parameter of uh, consciousness or C, one important thing that he mentioned was that when you are in doubt, ask mother and mother's perception is the most important. If mother is feeling that my baby is drowsier than usual, that has to be taken very seriously. So thank you so much, Dr. Praful Sanklecha and Dr. Abhay Jain. I hand over the uh, platform now to Dr. Ashish Dhongar. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity.
थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर प्रफुल एंड डॉक्टर अभय जैन कैन यू हियर मी Yes, we are. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Doctor uh, Akash. Uh, thank you, Doctor Abhay Jain, for the excellent talk. I think, uh, abhi like, आपने इतना simply बताया कि respiratory distress क्यों कैसे पहचानना है. कलर uh, से कैसे डायग्नोस uh, करना है कि ऑक्सीजन लेवल क्या है तो आई थिंक ऑल नर्सिंग स्टाफ विल बी डेफिनेटली बेनिफिटेड एंड दे विल बी एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स व्हिच आर रिक्वायर्ड इन न्यूनेटल क्रिटिकल केयर देर वर सम क्वेश्चंस आई थिंक डॉक्टर जेसल हैज ऑलरेडी आंसर देम सो फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस सो डॉक्टर जेसल हैज ऑलरेडी already answered them um, and uh, i think uh, from from on behalf of maharashtra state nnf i would like to thank uh, both of you dr abhay jain and dr prafulla sankleja for such a uh, excellent and good presentation with the videos and um, most important thing was that the way you have simplified it so i thank you thank you both of you and also the chairperson dr uh, akash bang thank you so much so with this uh, i will uh, close the meeting and so uh, we are going to meet uh, again uh, every alternate wednesday uh, same time 4 to 5 uh, so that will be our usual meeting time and so we'll be continuing this uh, nursing education program thank you very much thank you Thank you all.